Hi, this is Julian and welcome for this new uh, tutorial. I'm going to show you how to remove unwanted elements from an image. So this is a tutorial aimed um, towards beginner user of Photoshop. So we're not going to go through an intensive process of uh, compositing. I have two photos. Uh, this one is the first one we're going to be using. It's very easy. We want to remove uh, this in the sky, which is a bird probably. I don't even know what it is, but it could be a drone or a bird. It'll be very easy, like matter for one second. So this is the ultimate beginner step, like how to use the um, content aware uh, patch tool. Then I'm going to be uh, removing this boat, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you several methods to do it uh, because there are several methods to do it. And then I'm going to move to a second exercise where this one is going to be a bit more difficult. It's not immensely difficult, but it is a bit more difficult because this guy here is sitting next to the gate of Apollo in Naxos, it's an island uh, in Greece. And the, the photo is okay, it's not mesmerizing, but I have this guy sitting next to the gate, I'd like to remove him. Um, and it's a bit tricky because we've got several elements around him. We've got stone, we've got this rub which is in the foreground, he's actually sitting in the background. Um, and we have to do a bit of texture work so it looks uh, seamless. So we're going to open the first one, I'm going to right click, open with Photoshop CC 2017 and because it's a CR2 file, it's a raw file, it's going to be opened in Camera Raw. And in this photo it's not uh, very important, but in the second one it's going to be important because I have chromatic aberration and if you have this kind of aberration in the picture, it makes uh, the, um, the job more difficult, uh, especially when you go at the edges of the photograph because this is where the chromatic aberration is happening. So why not going to lens correction, just remove chromatic aberration, it's a matter of one click and enable profile corrections. Uh, it, it's been detecting the 35mm f2, I think for the other photo it's a Sigma uh, 18200, but we're going to see uh, that later. So let's open the image, uh, it's a Prophoto RGB, 16 bits. So we have a proper workflow to edit the photo. Uh, I'm not going to go into details about uh, bit depth and how to use the uh, correct profile, but if you want a no-brainer, switch to Prophoto RGB 16 bits per channel. It's the best you can do. So by default, as you know, the background is locked. Uh, we would like, if possible, to do non-destructive editing. Uh, so I'm going to create a new layer, and this one is going to be patch, all right? And if I zoom in, and yeah, it's a bird, it's not a drone. <laughs> Okay, so the easiest method if you want to remove something is use the J shortcut, which is here, the patch tool. It's the spot heading brush tool, but these, uh, all of these are patch tools. The spot heading brush tool by default is content aware. It's going to analyze the texture around the, the area you paint and make uh, the appropriate blending between the source and the destination. So if I draw here the shape of the bird, it's going to analyze the surrounding and paste the, the, um, the texture I need. It is really impressive. Most of the time, uh, it's really impressive. Sometimes it fails. Uh, not often, but it can fail if you ask something like really difficult. Uh, I don't know. If I go around here and I say, yeah, remove this boat. Well, for Photoshop, this boat is actually looks like pretty much like what's around it, like the structure, the pier. Uh, it's gonna be very difficult, but this here and this boat, well, there are isolated elements in, in a, I would say, kind of uniform texture, which is the Thames, the, the river. So if I go and zoom here and use a J shortcut again, make the brush bigger with Alt right click on a PC because I'm on Windows, but if you're on a Mac, just use Control um, Command and the left click. And let's paint the boat. Maybe it's going to try to blend with them um, part of the, of the bridge. No, no not even. It's not too bad. So let's do it several, in several steps. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job to recreate the texture in a few steps. And if we have the, uh, if we zoom out, if we display this photo on the internet, no one's gonna see this photo like this on the internet. This is 100% size with a Canon 6D, it's huge. Let's say you post it, I don't know, this way on Facebook. This is the, um, a 1080p resolution for the screencast. So this is actually a pretty big picture. This would look pretty big uh, on a web page, but no one will be able to, sell, um, to tell uh, that this boat was even here. If we go in this part, 
and it's the same. It's a bigger area, but it may work. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. We're gonna do it in the second step, maybe a third one, fourth one, boom, that's it. And we removed the second boat. It wasn't actually a boat. Um, the only reason I was able to put the, um, the patches on a separate layer is because with my spot heading brush, I have the option sample all layers. I think it's not selected by default. I always select it because it analyzes the entire picture, but it's able to put the result on a separate layer. Now, if this sample all layers is unchecked, well, once I selected the patch uh, layer, which is obviously empty, there is nothing to analyze, so it's not gonna work. So I have to tell, I'm working on this layer, it is empty, but I wanted to analyze the entire picture and all the layers that are below this one. So I click sample layers, and now if I analyze something, it's gonna take into account what's below this layer, which is actually empty, and put the result of the analysis and the, uh, and the patching on top of it. So this is quite a big area, so the computer is a bit struggling, and that was maybe a bit silly to do this, but I'm going to show you, it's <laughs> actually pretty good uh, to remove the, the wheel. This is overkill, obviously, we're not gonna do that. So let's undo, and I'm going to remove this patch layer, and we're gonna do this with an alternative method. So let's create a new layer. This one's gonna be patch, with content aware. This is the easiest. Uh, we're going to do patch with the stamp, which is the manual method. Uh, we were doing this kind of uh, method back in the days where no patch or healing brush tool were in Photoshop. I think they started to appear around Photoshop CS1 and CS2. Um, hitting brush, yeah, I think it's CS2, so it's been quite a while, I think it's 2005, so more than 10 years. Before that, we were using the stamp tool. That would be the S shortcut for the stamp tool. And again, if we say sample current layer, there is nothing to sample, so there's nothing to duplicate, nothing to clone. Now, I'm going to say, I want you to use current and below. So. It requires two steps. The first one is to uh, give him where we're going to sample. And usually you do this um, in an area which is just next to it. And then we're just gonna clone. A sky is a very easy texture but because it's uniform, especially there is no cloud. So this is very easy. But don't forget if you clone 100%, it's gonna be visible at some point. And I think it's gonna be uh, obvious here. So I am duplicated 100% uh, opacity, so all the pixels I sample from here, for example, are going to be duplicated here. And you can see the cross that shows me where I'm duplicate, duplicated the pixels from. And this is, again, an easy texture, so this part, which is completely duplicated now, it looks okay, but again, on a more difficult photo, like the one, the one just after with the gate, this is going to be a bit tricky with this time. We're going to have to blend uh, and mix different methods to achieve the effect we want. But it's not too bad. It's just that it, it's more subject to making mistakes. Like if you use it correctly, it's fine, but you have to be um, you have to be careful. Whereas with the content aware, it does all the job for you. And if it's done properly, um, you don't have to you don't have to really be careful. Right. Let's remove this part. There is here. A problem because we have a, sh a shadow from the wheel and the Thames, the river doesn't look uniform. So say if I sample from here and I try to inject the pixel from this part, as you can see, we're blending something dark into something bright and the other way around. So we have to take the sample from an area where the light is, is the same. So here, for example, would be okay, I guess because I'm duplicating from the bright part into the bright part and I'm gonna do same for here, trying to align and here we go. All right, it's not too bad. Now, this is okay because the depth of field is on a really high distance, but if you do that and you're cloning from something that is closer to you to something that is far away, further away, then you're going to inject sharp pixels into 
narrow it's supposed to be blurry because of the depth of field. So on this photo, it is actually working. The, the trick is working, but on another photo, it may be not working so much. Again, let's zoom out and yeah, no one will be able to tell that we're even here. All right, so now we have compared the fully automatic method with the fully manual method. Let's switch to a different photograph uh, that will be a bit more complicated. And yeah, actually, let's just open the CR2, right click, open with Photoshop CC 2017. And again, if we zoom in, we have this guy sitting here napping probably. Um, and if I zoom in on the left, we can see a lot of chromatic aberration and we want to avoid this kind of aberration because it makes the whole process of cloning a bit more difficult because all the edges are either green or red depending on which side you're cloning. So basically, basically you're working with, um, with problems and artifacts on your picture. If you remove them, well, you don't have to, to, to care about them when you're cloning stuff. Like if I clone something that has got a red edge onto something that's got a green edge, we're going to see that there is a problem. So let's first get rid of all the remove. Uh, let's get rid of the chromatic aberration by clicking remove chromatic aberration. So this is before, this is after. We've got a few more green spots, but I will be remove them, uh, removing them with manual. So enable profile corrections. And if I go to manual, I can remove the green amount and it's not doing anything because probably the uh, the part that is selected is not correct. Now let's let's be careful here because I don't want all the trees. Yeah, that's it. As you can see now the green um, the green pixels have disappeared, but if I have green stuff in my photo, they're going to be desaturated. In this photo that was okay. Just be careful when you move the green hue. So now we completely removed the chromatic aberration and we can switch back to Photoshop with open image and try to remove this guy. So if I zoom in and create a new layer. So because we have so many different elements next to him, the um, content aware may not be working that much. Let me show you. Like if I try to paint the entire guy, we're asking too much here because basically Photoshop can't um, recreate something that doesn't exist. So this is what <laughs> this is what the result is. So it's trying to recreate depending on the texture that is around, but it's it's not too great. Actually, it is not too bad, not too great, but not too bad because this is before and after. We can start with this. It looks like a mess, but it is it is a, a good starting point. Now let's switch to the uh, clone stamp, so it's the S shortcut, like stamp, and with 100%, we're going to, and maybe a brush with hard edges, so I'll click, right, um, left and right is for the size, up and down is for the hardness. I want something hard because I don't want uh, to get a blurry texture, but because it is very hard, I have to be really careful with my drawing. So what you could do is actually get uh, a new window. So if I go to arrange, I could say new window for this image and make this one floating, all right? And the idea here is to have a proper uh, preview of what the photo will be like, I don't know if it's posted on internet, on Facebook. And this is a small part of the image. so. Of course, you need to be to be careful and to be uh, tidy. But again, I mean, no one is going to zoom in at 100%. So let's not spend too much time on something that people that won't be able to see. So if we stay like this, it's not really good. But at the same time, no pixel. Um, I don't, I'm not going to say the F word, but no pixel mm, ink. <laughs> if you get me. All right, okay, so let's try to recreate this texture here and maybe put some of the, oops. So we've got some grass. And
yeah, let's do it around the stones. And I'm going to take some part of the grass here. Okay. So the rope hasn't been um, erased. Let's maybe, yeah, one patch here. There's a plastic bag on this pool, a polo gate, which is. I don't know, 3,000 years old maybe? So yeah, let's remove the plastic bag. Whoops. So I'm taking a texture that is close to it, not too close, so I don't, I'm not injecting, again, something bright into something dark and vice versa. And yeah, this is it, a bit more grass maybe. So now that I have to blend this texture with this one, like the grass with the, uh, the dirt, now let's switch back to something a bit soft, right? As you can see, it makes a better job to blend these two areas together. Now let's zoom out and look at this, even at a 50%, even at 100%, I'm pretty sure no one would be able to tell there was even someone uh, napping <laughs> this part of the picture. And at this size, it's even better. So this is a cool trick to create a new window and watch uh, what you'd be and what you're working on at a more a reasonable size. Now if this picture is going to be published 100%, obviously try to get the best result possible 100%, but if you aim um, at a web version of your photo and it's just for social network, for Instagram, for Facebook, obviously there is no reason to do too much and to recreate something that people will won't be able to, um, to see. Okay, so this was how to use the uh, content to wear just to get the, uh, the job started and finishing with the clone stamp. So this is how you get rid of unwanted elements the easy way. Again, this was for beginners, so we've got a lot more uh, to cover. Um, I guess in a separate video where I'm going to show you uh, something really complex like to remove people that are behind stuff or in front of something else with a, I don't know, a shallow depth of field so we will have to manage um, the depth of field so something will be sharp and you want it to remove it but uh, there is something really blurry in the background so you can't clone something from the background because you will inject blur uh, into something that is sharp so this will be a lot more difficult but first if you want to learn how to remove elements, you have to try with something that is a bit easier. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. Have a look on my website, julianpons.com. You have all the links uh, in the description down below that like button. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye bye.